Chase, Chase me. me. I'm Kai. I'm Angel. I'm Kendra. I'm Maddie. And we're at MetroCon 2018. And, and you're, you're watching, watching the Ravens Flock. Yes. All right, everybody. For those of you who are here, welcome, not just to another episode, but another panel at this convention of MetroCon in Tampa, Florida, in the downtown Tampa Convention Center. Welcome to the panel of the Ravens Flock. <laughs> you'll excuse me if my verbiage Thank you for is that. A, you'll excuse me if my verbiage is a little, yeah, thanks. <laughs> My apologies if my verbiage is a little out of place. It's been an exciting uh, day two already. Already? Yeah. It's day one for some folks, day zero for others, and we pity those for whom this is a day zero. Well, I guess they just can't handle p purchasing a ticket for the extra day. And they're I missing guess. out. But they're with us in spirit. Also, Hi. <laughs> my, <laughs> my name Hi. is Jose Casabona. I am the host. Joining me to my right is our... Esteemed colleague and uh, one of the greatest directors that we have, Mr. Juan Arouse. I'm the only director you have. Thank you for that, by the way. No, yeah, no need for applause. I do this for uh, my sanity. Thank yes. you for the. Hey, hey you solid. get one. You get okay. one. I get one. <laughs> Thank you for that. You get one plus one. And so joining to, to my left, uh, they uh, they have their own YouTube channel. They're uh, they're all over social media. I give to you, Casper. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. That Look at this beautiful move for some love. You get more than plus Thank one. You. Yes. <laughs> Thank Wait, you. Have you seen my face, though? Oh, well, yeah. Like, of course. Well, what are you trying to say? Is his face not good enough? We also asked for no applause. Yeah, you also, also asked for no applause. Yeah, that's true. I like. Everyone but, here knows I need applause to live. You live for the applause, applause, applause. applause, applause. You live oh, for God. the applause, applause. You, yeah. Jesus <laughs> Oh my God! Yes, Is there anything you won't turn into a song? Um, there are things, but I will not get into them. Well, anyways, um, we all hope you guys are having a wonderful time here at MetroCon. I know that there are attendees that that fly in not just from out of town but from out of state, and if you're one of them, I hope the travel was not horrendous. So, are you? Is everybody here local? Nobody flew in, or? You're, you're, you're local, you're local. Every you're right, local. So <laughs> you, you walked? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Hold on. What was that? <laughs> you drove how long? <laughs> I, went, I went to school with them. Uh, okay. Nerds. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, earlier this morning, as, he was, as I was trying to get over here, I did three laps around the embassy hotel trying to find parking. Like, mm -hmm. crap. Yeah. crap! 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 Yeah! Crap! Crap! Yeah. Until we tried it, until we try, hey, why don't we go for valet? And they're like, an additional $28, and I'm like, Frick that noise. I'm going over to the convention center parking. Thank you for that, by the way, for your self-censoring. And real quick, I just want to point out, due to the guidelines of the convention and for us to hold this panel, we have to rate this panel PG-13, which means we can drop basically any swear we wish, except the F word can only be done once. And this is a little tradition that we have when it comes to panels. We offer everyone in the panel room here with us to join us in one big F-bomb one time. After that, nobody's allowed to say it again for the rest of the panel. I will count us if off. You're, if, if, if you're willing to, if you don't want to participate, you don't have to. If you do, it's just a little tradition we throw in, so. Three, uh, two, one. Fuck! All right. That's it. No one else, not you, not you, not you, is allowed to drop it for the rest of the panel. We good? Of We're course. We straight? We good? Of yes, no, good. maybe so. All right. All right. That being good. said, let's good. continue on. we got to get that out of the way. No, of course, of course, of course. It's awesome. <laughs> we're not <laughs> looking to be demonetized. Well, actually, we're already demonetized. Yeah, we're too. fine. But back to the point. I hope you guys are having a wonderful time. I know you, it didn't come here not just for us. There's plenty of exciting shows going on for the entire four-day weekend. Uh, if you guys stick around later tonight, there, there's going to be a show at the Masquerade, the Masquerade Kingdom. And then at 10 o'clock... There's going to be a fire show, which is focused around Dark Souls 3. The fire show, in my opinion, is one of the best ones I've always enjoyed year after year. So that's your favorite show? It is my favorite show because it's fire. Everything is on fire. Little pyromaniac here. Casper, what are you looking forward to? 
I'm sorry. I got so distracted. I heard Stronger Than You from Steven Universe playing out there. We'll and my, my brain just went really gay for a second. <laughs> um, the sucrose <laughs> is strong with this one. <laughs> um, no, but I. this might sound cheesy. I'm just excited to be i mean t- tomorrow is my day i'm actually going to be at the con i'm just excited to be at the con my girlfriend and i are going to be a cosplaying um summer uniform go akechi and um the protag from persona 5 nice and i'm going to get up you know, get to meet up with friends i get to be in cosplay i get to see other cosplayers and i get to go shop it, that i'm just excited for the whole experience because to me it's kind of all just one hodgepodge mess of a disaster and a glorious time mm. And isn't that what cons are all about? After all, just enjoying ourselves in the beautiful disaster piece that is this community. Isn't that what we're all here for? Hey, folks out there, you're enjoying yourselves. Yes. Yeah, of course yeah. they are. You want to <laughs> win a free? You want to win a free gift pack from us? We got a raffle going on. No. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> they say they don't know. Hey, you know what? They're having fun. They're, having They're all fun. having fun. They paid for their tickets. They paid for an experience. I paid for an experience. I paid for some experience, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you ain't paying squat. We got you covered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm paying for my girlfriend's tickets. So. Almost all of us paid for an experience. Almost all of us. How about the uh, how about the gentlefolk up here? You paid. Oh, now that we're saying hi to you, they walk <laughs> away. You're looking out. You're looking in. You're curious. We call you in and invite you. Nope, now come on, nope. they're like cats. Now come on, one be considerate. Some of them are shy. True, and uh, I, I guess you know it, that's part of uh, another thing that that's uh, important at these conventions, helping the people who are usually not very social, being able to reach out and uh, socialize with like-minded nerds. Well, of course, if you have a variety of shows and a variety of guests and a lot of other interesting events going on, you know, you create enough demand, you bring all sorts of people around. True. Um, and that's sort of, that actually brings us to the topic over here for our panel. And for those of you who are not familiar with how our show works, uh, we usually discuss the subjects that not many p- other people in the convention scene or in the cosplay community or in geekdom here in Florida really cover. And that's, you know, like the stuff that's underneath the layers. That's the stuff that folks don't really like bringing up as, oh, this is taboo. Oh, this is going to cause drama. Oh, this is going to be such a problem. Ah! No. We bury the needle. We are not afraid of talking about this stuff. And not a lot of folks really like to think of the business side of conventions. you know. But that's what we're actually discussing over here. We're actually going to be talking about uh, like basically how at these cons are providing a service to us. And that is... Uh, that's a service of we have access to vendors that we would not normally be able to get to. That some folks don't even go online um, with their work. They they only directly sell through these conventions. Uh, they also provide us uh, entertainment, these stage shows and performances and panels, just like this one. Um, they give us a venue and a space for us to convene and for us to unite and uh, revel in our nerdhood. Um, and while we're enjoying that, the folks who operate the conventions, and we're not, we're not like specifically calling out Metro. No, 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 no. We are not name dropping anybody. We are not calling out anybody. (laughs) I'm an anime Matsuri. I'm sorry. I've got a cold. (laughs) Do you want some allergy medicine? Um, I, mean, I, I'll, I think I'll be all right. Do you want to okay. go inside one of the prizes, Juan? No, the <laughs> prizes are for <laughs> you folks. Kidding, I'm, I'm not going to get into no. that. No. But, um, but it's it, it, w- the folks who operate this stuff, they have to not only worry about making sure that the convention runs smoothly and, and there's no problem for uh, what they're doing, which is giving us this entertainment, giving us this opportunity to convene and giving us an uh, opportunity to have fun, but it's also... They need to make sure that, like with any sort of business, you have to have costs covered. You have to have operational costs. You have to have a profit on there as well. Because the staff and folks who work here, like most of the time, it's volunteer work, which is great. But you know, when you need to keep a roof over your head, you you gotta pay your staff. You know, or you gotta keep your own roof if you're the person running the convention. You've got to make some sort of a profit margin to make it worthwhile for not just the operation of the con, but for your sanity and for your own peace of mind. So while that's not in and of itself a problem, there uh, obviously have been conventions and there have been events uh, in the last few years which have placed profit and business motive over the experience. How's it going? 
Hi. Come on in. Join the party. What's Join up? up? We got a free raffle going on. Come on in, my friend. Have a seat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I am the gravity. Come to us. There's the gravity in this situation. Now. Nope. We're just I'll... so alluring. And you can't escape. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and pass you your raffle ticket, and I'll let you two continue. And I'm passing you your raffle ticket because uh -huh. we are giving away two free Confunk survival packages. So whoop, whoop. give me a second. Go ahead and take a seat. Enjoy yourself. Now, as one. The raffle will be happening closer to the end of the panel. Indeed. This is only an hour. We are discussing uh, the business side of conventions. We are discussing uh, where these cons are des are designed for giving all of us geeks a place to belong and giving us that. And on the other on the other hand, conventions have to maintain operation and they have to maintain a profit margin and stuff. So. Oh no! Well, well. Yeah, yeah, we'll open the floor for... We're uh, actually going to open up for everyone. We'll give you guys a chance to speak up in yes. a few minutes here as well. Yeah, so. but please, go ahead. Take a seat. I'll, I'll give you guys. I, I don't know if I'm going to do something that would be complicated. <laughs> uh, I, I can understand that. It's fine. Yeah. It goes over... <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, come on, dude. Like, <laughs> we're, we're All right. Yes. Hey, there you go. Come on in. All right, Juan, go Come ahead. join us. Yes, please, please join you're us. you're getting a raffle ticket, too. All right, Juan, as Juan is uh, taking care of the raffle business... As Juan's concluded uh, previously, there's many different elements that comes to uh, um, the fundamentals of uh, hosting a convention event, whether it's three days or four days. But ultimately, in my opinion, um, going back to the very, very beginning, it all starts with like the simple um, thing and that like the simple questions like, what, what are you doing this for? Why are you doing this? You know, are you doing this for yourself? Are you doing this for them? Uh, what are you looking to gain out of uh, hosting uh, out of hosting a convention? I, when it comes to putting things like this together, um, it, there always needs to be a equal balance of, you know, you have to be driven and you have to want to do it. So there's that aspect of it that's for yourself. You want to succeed and this might just be the Slytherin in me, but if you have a goal, there is greater satisfaction in achieving this goal and getting what you want. There's nothing else that's better than that. Oh, no, there's nothing wrong. Again, no, there's nothing wrong with being passionate. There's nothing wrong with being a little bit of Slytherin about it, as long as you're not too much Slytherin and you're not doing it just for yourself. Right. But right? <laughs> uh -huh. anyway, uh -huh. but you also have to make sure because if you're doing it strictly for yourself, then that's going to show to anyone who attends. And you also need to be able to be doing it for them, too. So because when you make a con, it's for everyone to come together and have fun and meet people and have these experiences that they wouldn't have anywhere else. And if you're focusing solely on profit or if you're bringing people, celebrities, artists or whatever, and if, even if they are strictly driven by their profit, that can trickle down and affect so much. So th there's a sense of community that has to be kept in mind, but also be kept, you have to keep that monitored. Right. Yeah, no, th that that makes sense. Uh, now, of course, like we're not imposing, like we're not suggesting, like oh, hey, we need like an offshoot of the security team, oh. specifically like the fun police or whatever. Are you enjoying yourself? Inva Are you invading your personal space? Like, Are you having fun yet? Uh, yes, I was. Go ahead, continue having fun. Okay. Lord knows the last time we had jackbooted thugs running around a convention, they got Ooh. mistaken for actual jackbooted thugs. I know, wasn't that fun? For those, like, can, can we tell this tale? You know what? Go ahead, May Juan. May as well. Regale us with exposition. Long ago, in the year of 2008, there was Was it 2008? Was it 2008? I thought it was 2006. Oh, no, you're, no, no, wait, yes, no, wait, wait. Time's an illusion. No, it was either 2008 or 2007. Two in the late 2000s. <laughs> there we go. What's up? So you know the tale of which we are about to tell. The Umbrella Corps. Yeah, uh, yes, which is literally a, a cosplayer group of guys dressed up as Umbrella from Resident Evil mercenaries or whatever. They had SWAT gear on them. They had airsoft rifles and guns, and they were armed to the teeth. So much so that they actually had the Tampa police called on them as they were marching on the convention center. There was a SWAT chopper overhead <laughs> wondering what was going on. Nobody could see the orange tips to their rifles. And when the police actually pulled them off to the side of the, of the street while they were walking up to the convention, like, stop, what are you doing? Like, 
These are just props. These are just props. It's not real. We're, we're just going in for co- it was it was a beautiful mess. Even and, yeah, and even though it was a beautiful disaster, the Umbrella Corp team in Tampa have left their place in history as far as Metricon goes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. Oh, and Lordy. they've been here year after year after year doing zombie wars every Saturday night. Uh, are they doing it this year? Uh, Matt, are they doing it this year? Okay, we don't know. know. Okay, don't know. thank you. <laughs> that helps. Um, so uh, basically, uh, like obviously, we're not proposing that um, that there's actually like a a division of like security or no. someone for the con, but it's more, this has to be introduced into the social consciousness of the attendees. This has mm-hmm. to be like, we're here to make sure that not, er- that everyone's having a good time, that everyone's being respected and that the integrity of the attendees without whom the convention wouldn't even exist is being upheld and being maintained when you're making business decisions and when you're making uh, decisions on guests and on vendors and on you know, stuff going on with the venue. So like that needs to be present in any sort of decision while uh, for, for the heads of the conventions uh, while they're operating everything. They got to keep that in mind. Of course, because if you ignore at le- even one instance where, you know, you have to take it to account of, you know, it's going to show. Yeah, like I, I'm not saying having like a big brother or we happy few no. division, but like m- morale, just so keeping tabs on morale and knowing that, you know, there are certain celebrities that certain conventions won't bring them back. I'm not listing names, but I've had this happen when I worked at some other conventions where they would have a celebrity who would come in, they'd have a long line, but the celebrity would be a bit of a jerk so bad that the people, the, co- the attendees would start complaining. So that convention, not naming names, but that convention Sweet is like, o- okay, we're not going to bring them back again. And so then they find someone else. And as someone who's worked with celebrities, you can definitely see how they treat the people attending goes to how the attendees will start treating other attendees or talking about it. So it's just kind of keeping tabs on who you bring in because that can th- that's what I meant. You, who you bring in will just affect tidal wave everything else that's going on. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, it, the, so it, it, that's that's actually a really good point because uh, the guests are there not just for fan interaction. They're they uh, on the other hand they are they are there because it's a gig. They're there because they're getting paid for it. Their agents gotten hooked up with a gig. So it's their you know responsibility to not be an a hole to the people who are helping you get paid. Mm-hmm. You know, like because uh, if there's no demand for uh, let's say uh, off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, uh, let's say. Uh, uh, Danny Trejo, whatever you know, mm. like anyone. Machete. Who's a, yeah, Machete. He's been. He's he was nice. in the Spy Kids movies. He was in From Dust Till Dawn. He was. He's an awesome actor. He's a great dude. Mm-hmm. If no one wants to see Danny Trejo, then you'll know. If people want to see Danny Trejo, they'll let the convention people know, and they'll try to work on bringing him over. And you know, it's up to. It would be up to hypothetically to Danny Trejo to like, okay, these guys want to see me. I'm gonna be cool. I'm gonna be chill with them. I'll be respectful to the the, the folks as long as they're respectful to me. Because you know, it's also uh, it's also responsibility of us the attendees to make sure that we're not all up in their face. Don't bring me back to that that no. Gate and Matarazzo oh, thing we God, had. No, oh geez. No, 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 no. So basically, what you're saying is, if they don't like you, they won't go anywhere near you. Exactly. And uh, but you got to make sure that you are respectful of them as well. Mm-hmm. Of course. So, like, they, and for those of you who aren't aware of, the, of what Casper was talking about just now, um, you can check out our video on it on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the Ravens Flock. We actually discussed uh, an incident where Casper was actually working as a guest liaison uh, up in Indiana for a Horror Hound yep. weekend, and she got to uh, work with Gate Matarazzo from Stranger Things. The kid's only 15 years old. And there was, like, just to put it simply, there was a grown lady who was trying to do exactly what I did with Jose just now. But like, I, but like he said, if you want to know more about the story, it's on our YouTube channel and it's on Black Files. So it's, you're good. Yeah, it's on our. The, it, no, it's, we, on, it's not on the Black Files. It's on the Black Files. Oh, it's on the main. It's on it's, the main channel. It's just on the main channel. Okay. I've been saying Black Files a lot today. You have been. Cut it out. We're, All right. I'm not doing a <laughs> podcast this week. I'm too busy. All right. Um, but. The way we f- uh, the way we figure it is that this is something that needs to be addressed, and the and this needs to be addressed not just for us attendees to make sure that we're holding up our end of this social contract of making sure that you know the the business side of the convention doesn't overpower 
actually trying to have a good time, which is the source and like the lifeblood of what the convention's for. But it's also so that the convention owners have that responsibility in their heads. They have to have it in their minds. Otherwise, what the hell else are they doing this for? Mm -hmm. You know, like I just without like naming names, like we said earlier, like this convention here, Metrocon, was founded originally out of a, an online forum. Uh, and um, the, if folks decided, you know, well, let's actually try and get together. And the very first Metrocon was born uh, off in a little hotel on the opposite side of the county. And out of that, what is this? I year 18? 16? 16. 16 years later, we're in the biggest venue in town. They've It's evolved into a four-day con. And you guys are here sitting, uh, listening to us ramble on about this stuff. And it you know, it's, comes from that sense of community. That needs to be upheld. Everything else is second nature. Everything else is secondary. So, like, that's important to have to have that and to have it held up, even when you're trying to cross the the, the T's, dot the I's, and make sure that you're not accidentally frauding Uncle Sam when you're trying to get the con fi- wrapped up at the end of the year. You, the last thing you need is for anyone to come and knock on your door. Put your hands against the wall. What, what is it? <laughs> you're under arrest for tax evasion. What do I owe? Don't twelve dollars. Don't mess with the IRS. That's all we're saying. If the Joker isn't crazy enough to mess with the IRS for then over twelve dollars, then you shouldn't either. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um. Real quick. Uh. I don't know what else you guys wanted to add before we open the floor. Um. I think we've added all that we can, my friend. All right. In that so case, yeah. Let's open up the floor. Let's get there. Who wants in. to speak up first? Come on up, and you can grab the mic, and I'll fiddle behind the camera and be all technical and shit. What gorgeous face wants to join us first? Don't be shy. Yay! Yay! Come on over. A real hero, the Princess of Thitmus Come on over. Come on over. Come on over. Yes. You hear my teaching voice come in every now and then. By the way, what's your name? I'm Ashley. Hello, Ashley. Welcome to the panel of the Raven's Flock. You may take my seat while I go be a techie. Okay. Um, so I saw that you guys are all into like cer- certain fandom and stuff. Mm-hmm. Out of um, DC or Marvel, which one would be y'all's favorite superheroes? Ooh. Ooh. It's, it's, it's got to be. Yeah. It, it, you, yeah. You know it. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's <laughs> got to be Marvel, right? Yeah, it's got, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 it's Marvel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well. But like yeah. a certain yeah. character. Okay, okay. Well, if we're doing certain characters... My thing is I normally have a character from each one that I like, but the way my brain works is I hyperfixate on a different character at different times. Mm -hmm. So you could ask me 12 weeks ago what my favorite character was, and at that point, it would be that character. Right now, ever since that Wonder Woman movie came out, um, that's been her. It's Wonder (laughs) Woman. I mean, completely honest, that movie shook me to my core. Um, <laughs> so I, I've also been watching the DC cartoons a lot recently, and ah. so I've been I've been on the Justice League, um, Justice League Unlimited. So yeah. the question, the question, yeah. the question. There we go. That's my favorite. The question. The question <laughs> is a good question. All right. Specific. Oh. He, he played Ratchet in Transformers Prime too. And he's <laughs> All right. All right, if I have to get specific on one superhero that I like, he is the best superhero ever. He is a superhero that inspires others. He is the superhero that fights crime and answers to a battle cry. No, actually speaks out the battle cry. One word with five letters. Spoon! (laughs) Of course I am talking about the tick. And if you don't know who the tick is, then you should be ashamed of yourselves. You <laughs> I just felt a shiver. <laughs> no. Ticks are I was actually also going to ask if you had anything <laughs> to contribute to the discussion that we were having about like the business end of conventions. Oh, yeah. I'm done with my oh, fangasming over the tick, but go on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely agree with you guys. Um, whenever like people are here, I notice that... Some people get kind of really meanish to like the celebrities and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I noticed that. So one thing I definitely tell people all the time is like, you have to sit back and think. Maybe they're trying to get everything done, trying to get out questions. So if they don't see you, raise your hand, or something like that. I've seen people get mad and storm out of panels and stuff. Mm-hmm. All I have to say is at least be considerate mm-hmm. and think twice. 
before just storming out because maybe they didn't see you. And, you know, celebrities have other things they have to do, so they don't always have time. Of course. So, yeah, it goes back to the respectful treatment of celebrities. Exactly. People yes. forget their people. Exactly. So. And if you don't treat them as people and you treat them as celebrities, it kind of hurts their feelings, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But, you know, I'm not a celebrity, so I don't know how they feel. And it's also a little uncomfortable to put them on a pedestal. Yeah. Exactly. That's how I see it. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing us with your thoughts. You're and, uh, welcome. Yes, of course. Um, does anybody else have anything they would like to share? Yes, please. Come on. Come on. Join howdy, us. Howdy, howdy, love. Yes. She's making her way on up. By the way, Casper, has anyone ever mistaken you for the creator of Steven Universe, Rebecca Sugar? No. Because you look similar to her Twitter picture. I, that is a huge compliment, actually. If I could be a creator of anything, Steven Universe would definitely be one of the things that... Absolutely. Rebecca Doesn't Sugar. she look like Rebecca Sugar? Like, there's yes. a Twitter picture. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the hair. It's the hair. It's, it's got to be the and hair. And the glasses. <laughs> oh, I was just about to say, I've been told I look like the gayest Harry Potter when I have these on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, give, uh, for, well, first of all, what is your name? Kimberly. Kimberly. All right, Kimberly. Now, based on everything that we've discussed uh, prior, uh, do you have any thoughts you would like to share? Um, it goes back to the celebrities that come to conventions, and I understand that their time is valuable, and when it comes to wanting their autograph, wanting a picture with them, even if it's just a selfie on your cell phone, it seems that it, it turns me off personally that they would charge... 40 50 60 dollars or so just for like one picture or an autograph mm. yeah. oh um i actually i have been a celebrity assistant with different celebrities for ever since i was in my freshman year of high school i believe um and that's actually something i've had celebrities complain about because it's never the celebrity who makes the decision it's their um agents and the companies that they work for and like when I worked with with Gaten um, to take a selfie with him just to take a picture with him was pretty pricey but Gaten whenever his agent was looking would like try and sneak a selfie with people so that they wouldn't have to pay and you know it, it's it is very frustrating and it's a turnoff for people who try and come don't have that much money and I've already dropped all this money on the ticket and they're already waiting in line and they're probably gonna pay for an autograph and stuff but then you get to the front of the line, it's like, hey, I don't have $40, so all I can do is shake this person's hand. Like, and so it's something that I think attendees are more frustrated with, obviously, but the celebrities also can find that a bit asinine. Yeah, because everyone wants a lasting memory. And like you mm -hmm. said, no, nobody really has cash on them. Not everybody can use an ATM either. Right. So of course, yeah. Yeah, it just... Like, I just don't know, like, how conventions work. It Like, when they get a celebrity, mm -hmm. like, do the celebrities have to pay their own way to, like, get hotel room accommodations and all that and, all, and everything to come to the convention? Or, like, does the con cover some of it, depending on the convention? Oh, hang on. I was actually going to say, normally when they invite a, a uh, guest to a convention, they will cover travel accommodations, and they will also pay them for uh, their appearance. And um, they and usually they'll have a guest liaison and they'll have access to um, like I think it's like it's like petty cash or something for like hey I want to go eat over here at this other restaurant okay well we've got I don't know five hundred dollars here for you just don't burn it all because it's got to last a weekend like sure whatever uh, if I understand that correctly I, it, it, and if anybody knows better feel free to correct me. On top of that, when, so yeah, you're right, and when they get brought in, the con convention's like, okay, we'll pay you to come, but then they're given a goal, how much money that they have to make, um, because they are bringing people to the convention. So, like, I keep bringing up Gaten because that was the most recent. With Gaten, his goal was $20,000, dollars $20, um, but by the end of the weekend, myself and his agent had pushed through $75,000. For autographs, selfies, um, just everything. 
No, you're good. People paid $75,000 to Gaten for the slew of like pictures you could buy, autographs, pictures. Um, so he over tripled what he was supposed to make. Um, and when you do that, conventions will bring you back because you just brought them a boatload of cash. Of course. Yeah, so. that was another thing I was going to ask too. Like with the money that they get, like, do they split it with the convention, like 50-50 or so, or a certain percentage goes to the convention and then they keep the rest? I think that um, the money that the uh, – this is what I'm – this is what I think it is. I'm not going to be 100%. I know how this works. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Um, that uh, the money that people pay the con – goes to the con. I don't know if the money that the celebrity gets is split between the celebrity and the convention. I think that's something that's negotiated mm -hmm. between the agencies and the cons, but that's kind of just a me assuming, but you know what they say about assumptions. So. Oh yeah, never assume things. Yeah, that, well, from what I see, you never assume. You make an ass out of me and an ass out of you. But I always am one, so like, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so is there anything else you would like to add? Um, not really. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, I think we have enough time for one more. Anyone else want to come grace their presence? Grace us. Yeah, you know, like that guy sitting over there all the way in the back with the black hat who I pulled in. That's right. Come on over, my friend. Come on over. Do it. <laughs> you can't escape my power. Come on over. Come on over. No. Baby. Come on over, come on over, <laughs> baby. Yeah. Oh There's yeah, no I'm escape. just showing Christina Aguilera some love. All right, she's a, fer a fellow Ecuadorian over here, so gotta okay. show some love. All right, by by the way, all what's right. your name and Daniel? Daniel. Give him here the mic. Go. What's up? My name's Daniel. Quit hogging. <laughs> yeah, I apologize, Daniel. I, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> so, uh, based on everything that we've discussed, everything that you've just heard, um, do you have any thoughts you would like to share? Um. Well, uh, I haven't been to too many conventions. I've been, I think this is my fourth time here, and I went to AFO maybe three times. Um, you know, so uh, I feel like I have a good vibe for what a convention should be, and it's like, I understand, like, you're kind of asking me, it's like, could you give maybe some critiques? But honestly, man, I'm walking around, I'm having a good time, seeing people happy. You have relevant stuff going on. It's thought provoking i honestly have no compl oh no I, okay i do have one complaint oh, okay uh i would appreciate it if the uh vendor room had been much better stocked oh have you have you checked out the vendor room for this year upstairs I'm, yeah i'm saying this year i wish oh, it had right. been better stocked oh yeah like are there not as many booths well no what it is is um there was a flcl t-shirt i wanted to get and it had nauta with both swords when he's glowing in that pink color fully mm. cool yeah on. exactly yeah. well by the time i got there they only had smalls left ah okay so like not enough not enough product is exactly. what you're saying i get you yeah I that's my you. issue but i mean let's be honest with ourselves isn't that an issue every year Everywhere. It is, and you know what? It's a first come, first serve. There's always going to be somebody who's going to try, who's going to want to buy that item before you do. And so. you can never predict, like, really how much more is going to get sold year to year. Right, and when it comes, uh, excuse me, when it comes to um, both what the official merch for the convention is, and for the the uh, artists and all those people coming in, something that was great, like, as you said, something that was great last year just might not be so hot or something like, well this sold a little bit we'll bring it back and that sold out yeah, it, sure. it everything just comes for and sure. goes in waves and i think you as the buyer like oh you know everyone has that oh well i'm gonna walk around get a look at everything first and then come back because you tell yourself you're gonna save money you save money because when you go back <laughs> it's not there so <laughs> <laughs> you know it's always oh my goodness. all right you know, awesome. I think I'm in the middle of one of those. It just hasn't quite finished yet. I oh, get you, yeah. man. I get you. Yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, Daniel, is there any other thoughts you want to add? No, this is great, man. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, no problem, you. man. Yeah. I release you. Be gone. Back to your seat. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I normally don't use my big voice. <laughs> Oh, we got a lot of more friends coming in. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, oh, my goodness. What time is it? Uh, it's 10 till. We're going to wrap up, and we're going to give the raffle to these guys as well. Hold Absolutely. Hold on. That's one, two, three, four, five more uh, tickets. You guys stay put. I'm going to pass them to you. And Joseph. Yo. 
give them our mission for this raffle. Tell the people what they're ra raffling in for. Of course. So basically what you guys are raffling in for is that uh, this year, once again, for the second time, we, the Ravens Flock, are carrying out a campaign, a campaign of the utmost importance for our, over for our overall uh, con community. An, an, important, uh, an important concept that I think a lot of people have ignored. And that is Confunk. <laughs> I don't think you understand. Personal hygiene is a number one concern. While I, uh, while I agree that putting together your cosplays is e is, and, uh, and getting everything ready for the con weekend is equally important, that does not mean you cannot spare five minutes in the shower. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we are gathered here to battle for the benefit of personal hygiene. That's something that has a new meaning. We cannot be d uh, divided by our own differences anymore. So, it, it would seem to be fate that on this month of July, the month of independence, that we are going to be once again fighting for our freedom. Not against tyranny or oppression or persecution. <laughs> Point. But ultimately, we are fighting against desanitation. We are fighting for our right to be clean, to bathe. Yeah. <laughs> and should we succeed, our campaign against con hygiene will no longer be known as a mere campaign. It is a moment where we've all declared in one voice, we will not sleep with the same underwears every night. <laughs> we will br not brush our teeth without a fight. We're going to go on. <laughs> We're going to survive. Today, we, the Ravens Flock, celebrate our anime convention day. <laughs> you wonderful people are what makes the con experience so enjoyable. Because not only do you come in here and you have fun and you attend these shows and you meet these awesome guests here, but you guys are a great example at taking care of yourselves. We can all spare a little bit of time to shower and put deodorant on and maintain a great a sense of personal hygiene, one that we can inspire the masses all around. Can we do it? Yes, we can! Fantastic! <laughs> All right. No, we do not. Rock the Dwayne Johnson smells of glory and terribly awesome tattooage. But now is not the time to sm smell about Rock the Dwayne Johnson. Basically, folks, we will have two winners. Each one of you has a raffle ticket. Who does not have a raffle ticket? Raise your hand. You do not have a raffle ticket? I'm going to give you one now. Okay. All right. Casper? Yes? You're going to go ahead and draw the two tickets. Okay. And for the record, folks, just so you know, uh, we were trying to go for uh, shampoo and a body wash for each one that were, like, not gender-specific and stuff, but Walmart hates us, so okay. one's <sighs> dudes branded, one's ladies branded. I can't help it, but just be clean. Just be clean. Just, just be smell clean. good. Wash yourself. All okay. right. Moving on. First one, the number is 9943893. You Woo! won! Yes! Okay, what is All your name, right. by the way? Regime. What is it? Regime. Regime. Okay, awesome. Go ahead. Come and on down and claim your right. prize. Okay, here you go. I will pass. I don't know which one. I'll just pass you this one here. Okay, so you know, you you have won a bathing loofah. You have uh, a bathing loofah. You have body wash. We shampoo, know. Listerine, uh, toothbrush and tra uh, travel paste kit, uh, deodorant, hand sanitizer, and your own personal bottle of Aleve uh, pain relief medicine. So, congratulations. All, All right. Righty. Draw the next winner. The next one is 9943880. Nine, eight, eight, 
Woo! We won. Awesome. Woo! All right. All right, Matt. Come on down, man. Claim your prize. Go ahead and claim that one. It is all yours. Sorry about the Congr hole on the side. We did not do that on purpose. Congratulations. Right. And we are near the end of our panel. Let Juan, Juan, come around the damn desk and give us the plugs. Whoa. He says give us the plugs. That sounds so odd. All right, we want to thank you all very much for joining us. This episode of The Raven's Flock will be coming out within the next week, and, you, you, and your participation is most gratefully appreciated. So continue to follow us on Facebook.com slash The Raven's Flock, Twitter.com slash Raven's Flock 13, Instagram.com slash The Raven's Flock online, Patreon.com slash The Raven's Flock. You can get early access to this episode and all the episodes of our programs, which includes our Let's Play show, Los Amigos Play, and our uncensored interview and review podcast, The Black Files, for as little as $1 a month. $1 a month helps support the Ravens flock. You get access to us. You're half independent media, half entertainment, all geek fandom, all for you. And so hit subscribe and hit the notification bell to our channel on youtube.com slash the Ravens flock. For those of us here in attendance in the panel room, for those of us attending the Metricon, I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. We are the Ravens flock and we are out.